Okay, it's been a while. So after a long, long time, uh, it's finally time for the second part of our journey of getting and restoring an old analog console to use and integrate here in our studio. This part may well be the most important of the whole process because it was the big question mark when we bought this console. And it was the fact that it didn't have a power supply. So we would have to build one from the ground up. To get things started, I have to say a big thanks to SideFX because he was the one that took on this project and although he didn't have any experience in this kind of electronics, he managed to pull it out and so far in an excellent fashion. From the few things I know from searching and reading online, the power supply is the most important thing when restoring an old console because if the console doesn't get uh, the power it needs it will have less headroom and also problems with noise and stuff like that but from the tests, uh, the few tests that I've done up until now it seems that we are on the right path because of the time that the power supply took to be built I also had the time to think about uh, what I want to do with this console and how I would integrate here in our setup and uh, the setup uh, that uh, I have uh, in my mind right now and that will be the first we try is uh, that we will use it uh, as a front end, uh, use its preamps and its EQs uh, while recording. But we didn't need uh, all the 24 channels uh, of the console because uh, it's quite uh, difficult and I don't think we will ever do it uh, to have 16 inputs uh, from our live room because it's quite a small live room and uh, even 16 seem to be a bit much for our needs. So I decided to keep 16 working channels plus two for the returns from the PC into the console and also the whole master and bass section. This gives us six channels to have for spares and things that we will need uh, for uh, repairing the console because uh, I don't think everything will work perfectly from the get-go. However, through the first tests, uh, there are some minor issues that uh, mostly have to do with the fact that it hasn't been cleaned up for a long, long time. So to get back to the layout, we will have 16 inputs that will be directly recorded through our audio interface and the ADAT expansion that we have. And also we will use the buses for headphone mixes and maybe in the future to bash things and record them together. But for now, because we will mainly use this for tracking, not for mixing, we will set up uh, like this uh, with the auxes for headphone mixes, as well as some effects uh, that uh, will be needed uh, when recording. So the big relief is that the console is working because we had no idea whether it would turn on or anything. It has some issues uh, with uh, noisy buttons, spots and faders, but mostly comes down to cleaning. And the truth is that it will need uh, quite a thorough cleaning to be working as it is supposed to be. Apart from the electronic portion that needs cleaning and I'm currently working my way through it, uh, there was also quite a few spots on the master bus that were uh, dinged up uh, and uh, had uh, rust. Uh, I don't know how somebody manages to do this. Maybe because it was a, a live console, it has seen some rough times. But anyway, I've cleaned up the best that I could the rusty patches and uh, I bought some uh, color to try and match uh, the already existing one so that the rust will not eat the whole thing. This is uh, a quick fix and it's certainly not uh, the ideal one, but uh, for now it will have to work. Another thing that I'm working on is integrating a Presonus fader port into the console because like I said we won't be using six channels and because of the modular uh, setup of this console we can just take out these six channels and replace them with a metal panel that will have uh, the fader port in it uh, so that we can use it uh, in a best way. Also for some reason I get really excited for combining this stuff, I don't know. After completing the cleaning process, the next step uh, will be to determine which capacitors we will need uh, replacing because uh, electrolytic caps have uh, a certain lifespan and uh, if they are not working properly we will not be getting the most out of the console. But uh, yeah, the only part that doesn't seem to be working internally is uh, channel 9 there's something weird going on because it seems uh, to get signal but it doesn't pass it uh, 
to the master section, so I'm guessing that either a connector or the ribbon cable that uh, connects to the channel strips uh, has something to do with it. So anyway, yeah, it may need a full recap which uh, will be quite a tedious process but is something that I want to do myself so that I can learn how to maintain the console. But other than that, we have quite a few tests to run and so far it's been really fun to learn this thing and learn how to work in this way. And uh, yeah, Bill and I are, are really excited to get it running as it is supposed to be and hopefully be the heart of uh, our little studio here. Anyway, that's all I have for today. If anyone knows the best way to approach this whole process, please let me know in the comments. If you like this kind of videos, consider subscribing, there will be more in time. My name is Alam, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.